All right, engineers, in this video, we're going to talk about the male reproductive system. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this model here. So if we first look off, we're going to look at the testes. Now, this part right here is actually going to be the testes. We'll take a look at its internal view in just a second. But for right now, this is the external view of the testes. Okay, it's consisting of what's called the semi-niferous tubules. Now, the semi-niferous tubules are basically where sperm production is occurring. Now, on the top of the testes, and kind of going posterior and backwards, we'll see another view of it in a second, is the epididymis, so B. B is the epididymis. And this is where the sperm is actually gonna be stored and matured until the ejaculation response. Then if you come over here, we're gonna have this nice little like blood vessel connection here. They call this blood vessel connection, they actually call it the pampiniform plexus. It's actually made up of a lot of different types of blood vessels, arteries and veins and stuff like that, okay? Now, if we move upwards, we're gonna hit this structure here called the vas deferens. Now, the vas deferens actually is gonna move upwards and upwards and upwards, and it's gonna move through this little tube here called the inguinal canal. And it moves up through the inguinal canal, goes posteriorly, and it fuses with this structure here in the back. So I'm gonna turn it just a tad bit here so you guys can see that view. This right here, you can see the actual vas deferens. It's going to come over here, and it's actually going to, it's going to go into a dilated part called the ampulla of the vas deferens. And then the ampulla of the vas deferens is going to fuse with a small little ejaculatory duct of the seminal vesicles. So this uh, structure right here is called the seminal vesicles. It's basically producing what's called seminal fluid, okay, which is basically helping to be a component of the semen. Then the vas deferens and the seminal vesicles will join, and they'll form what's called the common ejaculatory duct, which will move through the prostate gland, and we'll see that in a second. Now, I'm gonna come back into the anterior view for a second, so we can take a look at this again. So now, if you look here, we're gonna have the penis here, right? The actual, the whole penis, we'll have like the root of it, the shaft, and then this, this bottom part here, the tip. This part here, the tip of the penis, is called the glans penis, okay? Very, very rich in a lot of different types of touch receptors and, and uh, very, very sensitive to tactile stimuli or touch stimuli. Okay, so if you guys look here, this is going to be, you see this kind of like uh, silverish, opaqueish like tissue here? It's actually going to be a nice little connective tissue cord. They actually call it the spermat spermatic cord. Now, what this spermatic cord consists of is it consists of the vas deferens, it's going to consist of the blood vessels, the testicular blood vessels. It's also going to consist of some connective tissue wrapping around it. And then on top of that, you're going to have that vas deferens. So we have the vas deferens. We're going to have blood vessels. We're going to have a connective tissue sheath, and it's going to be running upwards. And there's also going to be some uh, nerve fibers and a little bit of lymphatic vessels in that area too. And it's going to be running upwards, surrounded by a connective tissue sheath called the spermatic cord. Now, on the spermatic cord, you're gonna have another muscle here. You can kind of see it coming down in bands. This is actually a skeletal muscle. It's actually called the cremaster muscle. It's a muscle that elevates the testes. It actually arises from what's called the internal oblique muscle, which is an abdominal wall muscle. Then again, if we follow it upwards, we're gonna see the vas deferens kind of poking out of it. So this right here is gonna be the vas deferens. The vas deferens is gonna again move posteriorly and it's gonna join with what's called the seminal vesicles. Let's turn this around for a second here. So if you look here, you're going to see again, vas deferens. The vas deferens will then join with a nice little plump uh, structure here called the seminal vesicles. And the seminal vesicles produce seminal fluid that will combine with the actual vas deferens, form the common ejaculatory duct that will move through the prostate gland and into the prostatic urethra. And we'll see that in a second here. All right, so now I'm going to come back here anterior. And again, just to get a little bit of orientation of anatomy, this is going to be the bladder right here. So this is the superior surface of the bladder. Okay, so another structure that we're going to look at here is inside of the testes. So if you look inside here, you can actually see where the seminiferous tubules would be. And again, they're going to have these little tubes called the tubulus rectus and then the efferent ductules. But what happens is in the back here, you're going to see C there before it goes into this kind of like part right here. You're actually going to have a part here which is going to be called, you can see here B is the epididymis. C is called the retatestis, these little tubes that actually push the efferent ductules back into the, uh, putting the sperm from the testes into the epididymis. And then if you have here, here's the epididymis, and the epididymis will actually connect with the vas deferens, and the vas deferens will run upwards. And then running with it again is gonna be these blood vessels that have some nerve fibers, lymphatic vessels, and wrapped in connective tissue, which is called the spermatic cord, like we saw, which runs upwards, 
gives off that vas deferens, which moves through the inguinal canal and supplies, or combines with the seminal vesicles to form the common ejaculatory duct. All right, guys, so now let's take a look here. If you look here, we're kind of looking at like a sagittal section, so we're slicing this bad boy down here. I want to take a look here inside of the testes, because we looked outside of it. Now I want to look inside of it. So if you look inside of the testes, you see this whole part right here, kind of like this, uh, this weird color here. Uh, this part right here is going to be the testes. Okay, so that's the testes. That's where the seminiferous tubules are. Okay, that's where the seminiferous tubules are. That's where the sperm is being produced. Now, what happens is the sperm is actually going to travel to another structure. You can kind of see it here. B, it kind of like imagine like a comma, like I'm coming like this downwards. So I make like a comma. That's going to be the epididymis. So the epididymis is kind of like a comma shaped structure. What happens is the seminiferous tubules produce sperm. And that sperm is going to travel through vessels called like the tubulus rectus and the reta testis and efferent ductules, and they'll empty into this structure here called the epididymis. Then what happens is whenever we want to ejaculate, the epididymis will actually push that sperm into this next structure here, D. And D is called the vas deferens. Now the vas deferens, we already said, will run upwards. And what happens is it'll run up with these blood vessels here. It'll run up with uh, nerve fibers, lymphatic vessels, wrapped in a connective tissue sheath, which we call the uh, spermatic cord. Then what happens is it runs upwards, right? It'll come up through the inguinal canal, and it'll go backwards and combine with that structure that we already talked about called the seminal vesicles. And it'll produce a structure. Whenever the seminal vesicle combines with the vas deferens, it produces a structure right here. It's really, really faint. It's this little divot right here in the prostate gland. That little divot there, is actually called the common ejaculatory duct, okay? So it's a tiny little divot there, which is called the common ejaculatory duct. And that is the combination of the vas deferens and a duct of the seminal vesicles that fuse together and run through the prostate gland as the common ejaculatory duct. Then, this is your prostate gland. This is actually gonna be the bladder. So this is the bladder right here. And actually, if you look at the muscular layers of the bladder, it's actually gonna be what's called the detrusor muscle which is a smooth muscle layer. This is gonna be the mucosa of the bladder, which is made up of uh, transitional epithelial tissue, which allows for the bladder to stretch. You're also gonna have a little sphincter here, a little smooth muscle sphincter right here called the internal urethral sphincter. And then inside here, you're gonna have rugae, which is all these like, kind of like this little like uh, extensions here of the, the transitional epithelial tissue. We also have another structure. We'll talk about this more later, but there's actually another structure here called the trigone. It's hard to see in this view, but the trigone is actually made up of three things. One, it's made up of one ureter. Like for example, this would be a ureter from the right side. So it's called a ureter orifice, which is just the hole where the ureter empties the urine in. And if you would imagine the left side, you can't see it here, but the left side, there'd be another ureter orifice, which is emptying the urine into the bladder mucosa, all right, or the cavity, the lumen. Then you're gonna have the urethra, the urethra, and it kind of like the internal urethra sphincter here constricts it and makes it really tight and forms kind of like a triangular structure called the trigone, okay? So the trigone is made up of the ureter orifices, both of them, and the urethra, and the internal urethra sphincter constricts the urethra to make it look like a triangle. All right, cool. Uh, just a little bit more anatomy here. This is your pubic symphysis. This is actually where the pubic symphysis is. And now let's keep coming down here. If we keep coming down here, here's the common ejaculatory duct. The common ejaculatory duct will actually combine with this urethra right here. It'll empty the sperm and the semen into the urethra right here. This urethra, because it's running through the prostate gland, is actually called the prostatic urethra, all right? Then, here's where it gets a little weird here, a little dicey in here. If you can see, you can see the skeletal muscle right here, and it comes all the way over to this side too. This is making up what's called the urogenital diaphragm. So the urogenital diaphragm is made up of this muscle that moves all the way across here. There's two muscles that make it up. One is called the deep transverse perineus, and the other one is a really, really important one, which is gonna be kind of right in here. It's called the external urethral sphincter. Why is that important? Because the external urethral sphincter is under somatic control. So whenever we have to urinate, we actually have voluntary control over that muscle so that we don't you know, pee in our pants, all right? So again, that's gonna be the urogenital diaphragm. Now, if you remember, we said that this is the prostatic urethra. This right here is the urogenital diaphragm. Once the semen or the urine flows through this space right here where the urogenital diaphragm is, this is now called the membranous urethra. So prostatic urethra is the urethra that's running within the prostate gland. 
The other urethra within the male is where the urogenital diaphragm is. That's going to be called the membranous urethra. Very, very uh, uh, small urethra. Ooh, another thing. There's a little gland in here. A little gland back here that squirts a little bit of um, basically kind of like a alkaline mucus that lubricates the gland's penis and actually helps to neutralize the acidic tract of the urethra. It's called the uh, bulbo-urethral glands or you can also call it the cowper's glands. And again, they produce kind of like an alkaline mucus uh, pre-ejaculation that actually is going to neutralize the acidic tract of the actual penile urethra and lubricate the gland's penis. So it's called the cowper's gland. So we got prostatic urethra, membranous urethra. Then once we go past the urogenital diaphragm, we enter into this really, really long urethra all the way down here, which is called the spongy or penile urethra. Okay, so spongy or penile urethra is going from here all the way down here. Now there's some erectile tissue, they call it spongy or penile urethra. Spongy is because it consists of like a spongy connective tissue surrounding it, and it's basically called erectile tissue. So there's two types of erectile tissue. This one right here that you're gonna see is like uh, all this part here, it's kinda like the darker purple. That is actually gonna be called the, and you can see here, it's consisting of what's called the corpus spongiosum. So the corpus spongiosum is actually going to be this actual darker purple erectile tissue. And what the corpus spongiosum does is, it actually kind of keeps the urethra open during the ejaculatory response. Then if you look here, you're gonna have another type of erectile tissue right here and then right here, all 67 basically, all this part here, that kind of like a, like a babyish blue color right there, that part right there. That's actually called the corpus cavernosum. And the corpus cavernosum, whenever this guy contracts, basically, he'll expand. So the erectile tissue is rich in blood vessels. And whenever it's innervated due to some type of tactile stimuli or parasympathetic nervous system, it'll cause the actual erectile tissue to get filled with blood, which will compress the actual veins that are trying to drain the blood and help to be able to maintain the engorgement of the penis during the erectile response, okay? So he's helping to be able to uh, engorge the penis with blood and prevent any blood from actually leaking out of the penis. All right? All right, out of the actual veins from the penis. Okay, so we got spongy or penile urethra. Sweet deal. Let's do a couple more structures here and then we're gonna be done. If you look in the posterior aspect here, just to get a little bit more anatomy here, this is actually gonna be the, uh, you know, your rectum. So you're gonna have your rectum here and then the rectum will lead into what's called the anal canal. Now in the anal canal, you're gonna have these little grooves here called the anal sinuses. Not that important, but just thought I'd mention it there. But there's two muscles that are really important. This one right here is 85, kind of like the inner layer here. Inner layer here, 85, is going to be a specific type of muscle that's lining the um, uh, anal canal, and this is called the internal anal sphincter. Okay, so 85 is called the internal anal sphincter. It's under involuntary control. So whenever we gotta go poo-poo, this guy is gonna say, uh-uh, I ain't doing it. If the, if the parasympathetic nervous system activates me, Gotta go. 84, he's very nice with us, right? So 84, he's actually very um, accommodating. He's called the external anal sphincter. So whenever you gotta go drop that bomb, what happens is this guy, you have voluntary control over him. So whenever you really gotta go uh, blast that guy out, what happens is this guy you're gonna have voluntary control over so you can determine if the time is appropriate to do that. If not, then he will con stay constricted. But then if it is time to go to the bathroom and you have to go restock the lake with brown trout, then this guy is going to go ahead. And if it's under voluntary control, you can go ahead and, and actually relax this guy and you'll actually evacuate the bowels. All right? All right, so we covered a decent amount of structures here for the male reproductive system. I hope it all made sense. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys did, please hit the like button, comment down in the comment section, and please subscribe. As always, Ninja Nerds, until next time.